There has been a ton of smoke and speculation, but that all changes this week as the Chargers get their first meeting with Jim Harbaugh, and it'll be up to them to blow him away with their first impression. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for eight seasons, but this is our sixth year as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? After all the rumors, after all the excitement, it is finally time for the Chargers and Jim Harbaugh to sit down and have that interview. And it's up to the Chargers to make sure that that he knows that they want him to be the next head coach of the Chargers. They want him to be the guy that brings this organization their first Super Bowl championship. Yeah, he's option number one with no asterisk behind it, right? And another Chargers potential head coach candidate really took a nose bomb of nose dive over the weekend with Dan Quinn's disaster in that game. But I also want to talk about a playoff lesson the Chargers can learn, which is just like, hey, look at Houston. If you get the quarterback right, if you get the head coach right, things can turn around very quickly. But today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. David, it's here. We knew this moment would likely come, but until all the talk and all those things happen, like you know, things could still change this week. But it has been reported by many different outlets and confirmed by many different outlets that the Chargers will be meeting with Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh this week. And this is huge. This is the first step. Does it guarantee anything? No. But what it is is a realization, right? This is an actualization. This is actually happening. The Chargers will get a chance to give their pitch. Even if they can't sign him, the Chargers have to do whatever they can do, right? Whether it's, you know, a, a little, hey, this is what the number's going to be. It's right here. As soon as you can officially sign it, let's get some sort of verbal agreement going. But it's up to the Chargers to make that case and sell him before he gets to go potentially talk to other teams. Absolutely. I mean, you have to make sure that, you know, you know that Jim Harbaugh knows that they want this marriage to go through and they want this to get started and they want to make sure that they have their head guy in a division that has Sean Payton and Andy Reid. They need their own coach that has the cachet, that has that championship winning mentality and that track record. That's what Jim Harbaugh brings to the table. He's been able to do it at every single level. You need a guy that's going to change the culture, that's going to transform the chargering way into winning proverbably year after year after year that's what Jim Harbaugh brings to the table and the Chargers need to make sure that they get this done as much as possible make sure that they speak to him and make sure that they convince him that he's the guy to lead the Chargers into prominence and it'll be really interesting you know we haven't heard anything come out from any of these interviews but just how it goes because this is where all the things are going to be you know kind of hashed out as far as I'm sure oh, yeah. Jim Harbaugh's camp has made the Chargers aware of what they want as far as the power that he wants in the organization. There's nothing that's come out that said, hey, he wants to be general manager right. too. But I do think another kind of, you know, side effect or another piece of the fallout from this meeting will be, okay, what if the the GM search kind of speeds up because of this, right? After they get yeah. to talk to him, after they get to talk with him about specifically which guys he's comfortable with, which guys he has a relationship and works well with, right? How does that kind of get impacted by what happens this week in this meeting? Because the other thing is, is we've saw him interview with the Vikings. We saw him interview with the Broncos. One interview with one NFL team each of the last two seasons. I know there was some smoke last year about him in Carolina. I don't think the meeting ever happened. But this is important that they're getting this meeting. And as we see it right now, they're going to get him first, which is good yeah. and bad, right? Because, hey, another team after they're actually allowed to sign him could go and talk to him and, and be able to not let him leave the building. The Chargers don't have that option this week. And I've seen a lot of this floating around, so I wanted to just go through it again. The Chargers can't hire Jim Harbaugh this week unless they have another minority in-person interview from a candidate outside of the organization this week. Right, They just did it with Leslie Frazier on Sunday, but to fulfill the Rooney rule, you have to be able to 
at least interview in person to minority candidates. So they've done one. The Raiders now are have been reportedly going after Leslie Frazier to interview for their head coaching position, but it can't happen this week unless they, you know, if Lovey Smith hypothetically were to interview for the Chargers head coaching job, they could hire Jim Harbaugh because they would have fulfilled it. But as of right now, nothing can happen until after the 22nd when all the other guys like the Patrick Grahams that they've interviewed virtually because they wouldn't be allowed to interview him in person until the 22nd of January. It's not going to get done this week. That's why it's so important that you lay it out there exactly what you want because other teams still might have an option to interview him at some point. Yeah, I mean, you got to make sure that you satisfy all the requirements of the Rooney rule because there are severe penalties if you do not. I mean, the, I think the Cincinnati Bengals just recently got docked two draft picks for violating par uh, parts of the Rooney rule. So that's one of the things that Chargers definitely can't afford to do. I mean, with their cap space and the situation that they're in, they need all their draft picks available to them. And, you know, they just got to make sure that they do things the right way. But yes, the Chargers, Jim Harbaugh finally meeting. Hopefully they can you know get this done as much as possible, but things can't officially get done uh, until the 22nd of January. And we'll kind of see how the landscape changes because of the things that have happened even the last couple of weeks, we've never been able to predict, right? Like no. Nick Saban, Pete Carroll, Bill Belichick all moving Craziness. on in, in a span of 24 hours. Like that's just not something that we could see coming, right? And I think you've seen another development on the Raiders side of the Jim Harbaugh race and how much weight this carries is unclear at this point. But when your best player comes out and says, basically, I could request a trade if you don't keep Antonio Pierce, who's the interim head coach right now for the Raiders in place, and you go with another coach, I could request a trade. David, that is big news, right? Like he's putting yeah. basically an ultimatum out there. He talked about it again later on. Those were reports that were coming out saying, hey, he might request a trade if they don't keep Antonio Pierce. But then he talked about it and put his own words to it. And he said, I have to consider everything. Nothing is off the table. They kind of ran into this with Rich Bisaccia, the guy who famously beat the Chargers in week 18 in the game that could have been a tie and everyone goes <sighs> home happy. They decided to move on from Rich Bisaccia and they went with Josh McDaniels. You saw how that worked out in the locker room. It didn't. It was no. awful, right? So yeah. as much as this is out there, I mean, I, I still am not going to put Mark Davis out of the running. But this definitely seems like that takes a hit for them, at least in their chances to go get Jim Harbaugh for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, Max Crosby is the heart and soul of that football team. I mean, he is a guy that really represents the Raiders and his words have weight. I mean, what, what he says, you know, in that in that locker room and in that organization, it definitely is not falling on deaf ears. I mean, it's going to be taken into account. Because this is a guy who's been out there and played with a bunch of injuries and still has wrecked games. I mean, he's yeah. just a true difference maker. He's one of the best defensive players in the NFL. Um, and honestly, also just a, a very, very good story to kind of turn his life around to where he is now. But when he says something, the Raiders organization is going to take that into account. So that could definitely throw a wrench in Raider fans hopes of potentially hiring Jim Harbaugh as their next head coach. Yeah, it, it feels like it has to have some impact on it, right? And any kind of impact, anything that slows down the process of them potentially getting in a bidding war with Dean Spano's Sounds good to me. family is something that's hugely beneficial from the outside looking in. And I think yeah. Max Crosby is one of those guys that he, uh, many Chargers fans even kind of begrudgingly have to like just because they yeah. get to witness how good he is and how good he's been with them. And they see it twice a year, right? And a couple years ago, saw it yeah, three times an in the same year. Yeah, I mean, the Char Chargers offensive tackles have lost jobs because of that, dude. Hopefully, <laughs> you know, Jim Harbaugh loses the chains at the Raiders because of Max Crosby, and that would make him even more likable to Chargers Nation and the Bull fam out there. But this is another development, but that's just how quickly things can change, right? Like, we're going to see more. Will the Cowboys fire their head coach, Mike McCarthy, after a really embarrassing loss? We saw the Chargers do it with Brandon Staley after their embarrassing loss. Could the Cowboys and Jerry Jones get in the running for Jim Harbaugh? Would they be willing to make a move like that? And also, one of the other Chargers candidates, if they don't get Jim Harbaugh, was Dan Quinn. Doesn't feel like that anymore after the performance we saw from his defense on Sunday against the Packers in that blowout. So we're going to get into if we should be concerned about Jerry Jones and Dan Quinn's disaster coming up right after this. First, though, I have to tell you guys about Game Time because Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute ticket deals and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're going to have. 
Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. And the best thing about Game Time is they take the stress out of getting your tickets because you get the Game Time guarantee. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find the tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. There's no downside to it. And they also do great things like zone deals where you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for you and you save an average of 18%. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. And you also get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I also need to tell you guys about Jace Medical because I know we come to sports to escape the crazy realities of life, but can we talk just a minute about preparing for real life? Because according to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade, and that is scary. I mean, for me, I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if someone in my family got really sick and supply chain issues kept them away from life-saving medications that they needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff can happen to any of us. So you have to make sure you're prepared. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It'll be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular price. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use the offer code locked on to get $20 off your order. All right, David. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Jim Harbor before we get into some of the things we learned from this playoff weekend. And it's not over. Two more games today that we could learn some things from. But Jerry Jones is one of those, you know, enigmatic names that you would think definitely could fire Mike McCarthy after the performance. And as you guys are listening to this, Mike McCarthy's head could already be rolling, right? That's just kind of where it's at right now. But I think it, it, it's scary to think of more teams like this, especially notable franchises like this, potentially getting into the race for Jim Harbaugh. Because, I mean, we don't want Dean Spanos getting into a bidding war with Mark Davis. You definitely don't want to get into a bidding war with someone like Jerry Jones. Absolutely not. I mean, the, Jerry Jones is one of the richest owners in the National Football League. His team is one of the richest franchises in the National Football League. Yeah. So resources are really not you know, an issue for him whatsoever. So if it's about adding zeros to a check, there's not many battles he's he's going to lose to with any of these other NFL owners. So hopefully <laughs> Jim Harbaugh doesn't want to work with an owner that notoriously wants to have, you know, a say in personnel decisions, because that is something that Jerry Jones likes to do. He does like to have some of that control. He likes to have his input really kind of be heard and be felt. And hopefully the Chargers don't meddle as much in that situation and they have a leg up in that in that spot. But if it comes down to dollars, the, the Chargers definitely can't compete. Hopefully they have their eyes more set on a guy like a Bill Belichick than Jim Harbaugh. I mean, yeah, you have a Bill Belichick, you have a Mike Vrabel, who's another guy they could potentially go after. There's other yeah. big names. I mean, there's a Pete Carroll floating around out there. Like, that's the crazy thing here. But the, I think the nice thing is, is he usually goes with yes men, right? That's how Jason that's Garrett keeps a job for 10 years. Oh, that's yeah. how you end up with someone like Mike McCarthy, who's not going to make a ton of waves, at least from the outside looking in. That's my perception of it. Yeah. The last big name he hired was Bill Parcells, and that was, you know, over 20 years ago. So, a like, long time ago. That, this would go way out of what Jerry Jones normally does if they were to pursue Jim Harbaugh. Obviously, the money is scary, and I think their situation is scary, right? I mean, that's a team that's ready to win now, a team that's yeah. made three consecutive playoff trips, plays in a much easier conference than the Chargers do, a much easier division, I would say, overall. I mean, you still have the Commanders and the Giants who aren't really there yet, right? But you do have the right. Eagles. But still, you don't have the Chiefs. You don't have Patrick Mahomes, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's scary, but I, I don't think they're, they're, they match. I don't, I don't think the yeah. Egos match. I don't I'm, think I'm the personalities you. match. I, and but like, you know, Bill Belichick could be the same thing, right? Is Bill Belichick going to let Jerry Jones have the handle on things? So it's like, it's hard to say where they would go. And even if they're going to fire Mike McCarthy, but if it was going to happen, 
feels like it would happen after that game, as Chargers fans saw with Brandon Staley. But yeah, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys was Dan Quinn, who was only a couple of weeks ago one of the hottest names in this coaching cycle, right? Like, obviously, for him, doesn't help when guys like Mike Rabel and Bill Belichick and Pete Carroll also enter that same cycle. Not at all. Right? Because it's like <laughs> those are all defensive coaches that bring the leadership and bring the intangibles and all of those things, know how to build the staff, all of those guys yeah, know how to do all those all things. That, you know. Yeah, the 28 to 3 part of it, too. I mean, that he already had that, right? But how, how did he know he was going to have to go up against other legends, right? And other really quality head coaches. But, David, the performance we saw from Dan Quinn's defense on Sunday night, like it, it felt like not that we had him high up on our list, right? I mean, I've, we've already talked about kind of our hesitation with Dan Quinn and, and why, you know, 28 to 3 being one of those things. But, like, it feels like that was the official kind of dagger in those chances and what we saw on Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. When it comes to Dan Quinn, you just take the pen and you just, and then, you know, you just scratch his name off the list list after that performance. So the Packers dropped 48 points on the Cowboys, Um, you know, 34 of those, you know, outside of turnovers, which one was a pick six and the other one created a very short field that turned into another touchdown. But besides that, that's still 34 points. And you made Jordan Love look phenomenal. I mean, and, and hey, <laughs> yeah. hats off to Jordan Love because so he's really Staley. been playing out of his mind. But 76% completion percentage and three touchdowns is crazy. And then Aaron Jones went off, too. I mean, 21 carries, 118 yards, three touchdowns, 5.6 yards per carry on the ground. So it didn't matter if they threw the ball. It didn't matter if they ran the ball. Yeah. The Cowboys couldn't stop anything. <laughs> and yeah. uh, unfortunately that's dan quinn's unit so he's the guy that was running the show and it seemed like honestly lafleur did whatever he wanted to i mean and every button that he pressed it worked and they came away uh with a big victory when they were definitely one of the bigger underdogs of the weekend yeah i mean jordan love getting a you know perfect passer rating and averaging 13 yards per attempt insane that was the thing that to me it just they made it look so easy and it looked yeah. like that against brian staley too and jordan love owes you know <laughs> at least some of his success in that break a nice game. fruit basket over to brandon sure staley. for sure even though like hey he was getting hurt by a lot of young receivers and you know the youngest receiving core in the league youngest tight end groups but they're another you know team that shows you kind of how it looks when it's done right and, and they've obviously done it right and, and how lost the Cowboys defense was, like the blown coverages, the big plays that they allowed, it was just, yeah. it was staggering. It, it was a team that seemed like they showed up. It seemed like they showed up unprepared. Like the yeah. game plan was wrong. Like in with Brandon Staley and like, hey, the players had to go out there and execute it, right? Sure, Brandon absolutely. Staley yelled from the mountaintops. But you can only use that so long. And third straight year where they're bounced by a Shana Haney in offense, right? Like the last yeah. three years, they lost to the 49ers twice. And now this year with someone from that Mike or that Kyle Shanahan coaching tree, right? Yeah. And allowed 42 points to the 49ers this year in that blowout. And then obviously got lit up the way they did in the playoffs. So not a great look. Wasn't one of my favorites, but it feels like that door has closed. It'll be interesting to see if he can still get a job. But Ben Johnson also showed off a little bit and kind of an up and down game. Ben Johnson, you know, really, really good first half. I mean, the second most points they'd ever scored in a first half in Lions history or any half in Lions playoff history, which is obviously yeah. not very expansive. No. But it, I think the other thing here too, David, is just like, hey, Raheem Morris's defense was really good with the Rams. I mean, look what Sean McVay's offense did. Put up one less point, right? So I thought Ben Johnson, it, he, he didn't have a stinker. Like, could it have been better? Sure. He is working with Jared Goff. We know that. But like, yeah. that's what coming prepared looks like, right? Three touchdowns right off the bat. That's kind of what you're going to see. And I think he definitely acquitted himself in his first playoff matchup. I mean, yeah, 21 points in, in the first half. And, you know, Jared Goff going for 22 of 27, over 80% completion. I mean, that, that's tr- truly phenomenal. And also put their number one wide receiver in, in a really good spot to be featured. Se- seven catches for 110 yards for Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah. Um, not a really strong second half by, by any stretch, obviously no. only scoring three points. But you finished with the football, Okay. On yeah, offense, when it mattered late, yeah, sure. You, you you made the plays when it mattered. You put the ball game away, and you finished in victory formation and winning a playoff game for the first time since 1991, the year of my birth. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy that it's been that long. Yeah, I was not alive for it. I was born in 1992, so it's crazy. And we'll talk about the Lions because I think the Chargers can learn a playoff lesson from them Absolutely. as well, right? A, a team that totally changed the narrative around them that's a loser franchise right 
Can't really laugh at him right Not now anymore. the way that went. But, I mean, the Rams had only allowed 24, point, 24 points or more four times all season. Like, that Rams defense was pretty good. Yeah. And, and I, you don't like to see, you know, what that second half looked like, only putting up three points. Yeah, I like that they went for it late. They threw the ball late to go and seal that. They went with their best player to go seal it. And when they needed to, they got a first down running the football, and they threw it when, you know, maybe the conventional wisdom is just run it and run the most clock. They didn't necessarily go with that, right? So I enjoyed that. And the great thing is, is he has another chance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he has another chance to continue building his resume and he's still one of the top options. And, you know, and I think that that offense showed that they had the answers, especially early on. You'd like to see and some they better won a adjustments, playoff game and they won a playoff game, which is obviously something the Chargers couldn't do when they put up three points in the second half. But that's another story for another time. What I do want to talk about is the playoff lessons that the Chargers can learn from the Texans who got their coach. They got their quarterback. And now all of a sudden, they're looking like they're in a very, very good spot going into the second round of the playoffs. I look, I, and, and like that, right? Like that was not a talented roster. That was not an attractive job this season. And just like that, they're blowing people out in the playoffs. So we're going to talk about that coming up right after. That. First, though, I do need to tell you guys that the NFL regular season is over, but there's still time to get in on the action right now with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, guys, FanDuel has one of the best deals I've seen from them. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. All you have to do, place a $5 bet. You know you're getting $150 in bonus bets, and that app is super easy to use with so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, or you can go make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays. The other great thing is they always have so many great promotions going on all throughout this playoffs, even though the Chargers still aren't in it. And you can always go, hey, basketball's in full swing right now, right? Hockey's going on too. But if you want to, playoff action is awesome, and it's always funner to bet on the playoffs when the stakes are as high as they are right now. And they always have great things like no sweat games, right, where you basically have no sweat in betting on that game. And you can also get some profit boost tokens. So make sure you guys are checking out the promotions going on at FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, well, I do want to talk about some of our playoff lessons. This is something I've liked that we've done over the last couple of years, which is just like, hey, there's a reason we're not talking about a Chargers game this week, and it's because they didn't make the playoffs, right? And I think there's a lot of things that they can learn from some of these teams that if, hey, they can make those things quick for them, they can be a team that's consistent and, you know, finally – can win consistently and constantly be in the conversation instead of making the playoffs once every four years. But I do want to tell you guys first that Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Lockdown plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. David, the Texans are such a cool story, right? Two head coaches fired after a year, never really got a chance, but they found the right one this last offseason. They brought in D'Amico Ryans, who was a defensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. They drafted C.J. Stroud, number two overall. And just like that, not only are they making the playoffs, but they're winning a playoff game. And how long has it been since we saw the Chargers do that? 2018, right? And they've had all these guys here. They've had a quarterback, right, for all the last 25 years, right? Yeah. The Texans are showing what the blueprint is, right? And and they're showing that if you have the right coach and you have the right quarterback, you can turn things around quickly, which I think is a really good kind of hopeful thing to see, especially with what the Chargers are facing in 2024. Well, and like just look where they were last year, too. I mean, we're talking about a team that was three and thirteen in three thirteen and one. Yeah. Three thirteen and one. I mean, that is awful. So you know, that's why it's important to look at this with the Chargers being, you know, finishing the 2023 season, 2023 season at five and 12, that if you make the right moves in the off season, you can turn things around very, very quickly. They got the right head coach. The Chargers have an opportunity to do that same thing, get the right guy in the building to be able to lead this organization. Already got the quarterback with Justin Herbert, obviously. And then you pair that with a great play caller and you have to hit on the draft. I think that's another aspect that the Houston Texans did extremely well. Not only did they get Stroud, but they also got Will Anderson, who made his presence felt in his rookie season, and Tank Dell made a ton of plays for them throughout the season that helped, you know, kind of 
spur that offense forward to get them to the playoffs. So, you know, getting the coach right, making sure that you get the, uh, you know, the right quarterback and making sure that you hit on the draft. If you do all of those things, then you can find yourself right back in playoff contention the very next season. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're four and 13 two years ago, three and 13 and one last year, and now 10 and seven with a playoff win and also won a game with a backup quarterback in CJ Stroud's absence, right? Like built a full team. It was a full team experience with the Texans. Yeah. And they found their quarterback, which is awesome. But the other big thing about it is, David, is just like this was not a desirable roster going into no. this season, right? This was yeah. a. This is a team that's early. They're doing it ahead of schedule. And that's what you want if you're the Chargers because it's not only yeah. them crushing those draft picks, right? It's also the fact that D'Amico Ryans is in there and the coaching staff that he's brought together is getting much more out of the guys they already had on their roster. Like, who was Nico Absolutely. Collins last year, right? Like, barely, if you didn't play fantasy football, you probably wouldn't know who Nico Collins was, right? Right. He Fair. was a, a pro bowler this year. Like, yeah. They got more out Big of the roster, machine. and and I think if you're looking at the Chargers roster, you say, hey, Jim Harbaugh can get more out of this. You know, the next guy oh, can yeah. get more out of this. And I think it also shows, hey, they went with a defensive-minded head coach. There's a lot of defensive-minded head coaches that are available to the Chargers right now, even though you would lean, you know, someone like Jim Harbaugh, who's kind of the best of both worlds. But if you can build the right support staff for your offense, you can be a defensive head coach and still win. Yeah, I mean, that, that's why, you know, it's really important to to pair, not only get the quarterback right, but pair that quarterback with the right play caller. So that's why Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator for the Texans, is getting a bunch of head coaching, you know, buzz a, around yeah. the league because he has been able to take a rookie quarterback and turn him into a playoff quarterback with a playoff win. So now they're advancing forward. And, you know, it, it's been one of those, you know, experiences when you watch the Texans offense that they create these big plays that are wide open, like yep. the, like they scheme them open. And so I think that's one of the things we were hoping that we were going to see with Kellen Moore. I think for one reason or another, whether, whether it was protection breakdowns or the lack of running game, we didn't see it too much. Um, and we wanted to see more of it. But if you have the right play caller and you match that with the quarterback, then you can see the fireworks come out like cj stroud had in his rookie season let's not all forget uh, what justin herbert did in his rookie season too obviously it's in the record books if you haven't seen it but i don't think we've seen the most out of justin herbert yet so finding the right coordinator to pair with justin herbert is still of paramount importance yeah and the thing for them will be can they sustain it right what happens right. if bobby slow goes and gets a head coaching job this cycle right like yeah can they keep it going? Can they keep that same offensive foundation around C.J. Stroud? Because that is one of the downsides of having a defensive head coach is, hey, you could have to cycle through offensive coordinators. But if yeah. you have that foundation and you can put different guys in to put their own twist on it, it can still work. And I think that's a good lesson for the Chargers. I also no think doubt. the Lions are a great example of a team that turned it around pretty quickly. And not just turned it around pretty quickly, but changed the narrative around a loser franchise known for losing. Known for making players like Barry Sanders and Megatron retire, right? Yeah, they changed that on Sunday night in a big way. I mean, three and 13 in 2021, nine and eight in 2022, 12 and five in 2023, progressively getting much better. And a division win. And a division, yeah. And the other thing is, too, is just like they made it work without an elite quarterback. It was a full yeah. team effort. Dan Campbell's not a schematic mastermind by any means, but he, great, he built a great offensive staff around him. He's a leader of men, brought the team physicality and all of those things. And just like that, they have changed the narrative around their loser franchise. Yeah, and and one of the, the, the biggest ways that they did it was, you know, you got to give hats off to the general manager because they've drafted exceptionally yeah. well the last several seasons. This is from Josh Norris on X. 2021, Panay Sewell, Amon Ross St. Brown, Aleem McNeil, just to name a few. 2022, Aiden Hutchinson, Josh Pascal, Kirby Joseph, 2023, Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta, Brian Branch, Jack Campbell, all guys in the last three drafts that have made big impacts on the Lions and turning them around from yeah. a loser franchise to a franchise that has won the playoff game and is looking for more in the playoffs and looking for a championship still. Yeah, and it's it's so cool because I think Chargers fans can relate with Lions fans, you know, yes. like if you think you've had it hard the lions have definitely had it tougher you know what i mean yeah. that's their first playoff win in over 30 years whereas the chargers you go back to 2018 even though you know 
feels like a very, very long time for them. In reality, it's been a, you know, three decades of futility. <laughs> and, and to Ooh, see Dan Campbell man. be able to turn that around, you know, is so yeah. impressive. And the job they, that he's done with the Lions has just been so impressive over these last few years where it's like, hey, you see that one. You see these teams and these franchises turning things around. And if there's one thing we know about the Chargers, it's changing the culture, getting away from the charging, and finding someone with broad enough shoulders to right this ship because it's yeah. going to be tough. And there's a long, long list of disasters the Chargers have faced to get to the where we are now. And Chargers fans, all we hope, right? Get the guy that can turn it around. And we've seen a couple of examples we just talked about. It can happen. And it can happen in 2024. It might yes. not take long if they get it right. So it's going to be so great to see kind of what happens the rest of the week. And you talked about general managers, who they pick for that and who is going to be hitting on draft picks, which they will absolutely have to crush in 2024 if they want to keep this team competitive, is going to be so important. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about the guys, not just that they're linked to, right? Guys that are linked to Jim Harbaugh, guys they have interviews scheduled with or have already interviewed so many guys to talk about and the favorites in the clubhouse at this point. So make sure you guys are here for that by following us wherever you get your podcast from. Make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel as well. You can listen wherever you get your podcast from. And just because you watch on YouTube doesn't mean you can't subscribe to the podcast as well. You can do all of those things. And you can also find the show every day on our social media. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports, David at Dro Talk SD in the show's page at Locked On LAC. You can also find us on Instagram at Locked On Chargers and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page. If you guys want to call in and get your voicemail in for the next fan mail show, call on to 323-524-7924. But we'll be getting into this Chargers general manager search tomorrow, guys, so make sure you guys are here for that. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.